Okay guys, we're here today at Saddleback and we have uh, worked with our good friend Stiff Cycles just down the road from us and they have kindly donated us a Santa Cruz Mega Tower. So we are actually going to trick this bike up today a bit, get it a bit winter ready and we're going to put some special parts on it. So we're here in the Push Industries lab, the, uh, the, the workshop and uh, we've got some special parts that are going to get fitted to this bike. So let's grab them. Uh, so let's go down and pick up this lovely bike that the guys have very kindly dropped off for us. It is a beauty, absolutely beautiful. And it'll be even nicer once we fit these. So let's get this along to the workshop. Let's go and speak to our main man, Ollie, and uh, let's get this fitted. Right, we're now in the workshop with Ollie, Hello. one of the uh, Saddleback mechanics. Ollie actually looks after all of the fitting of anything push industries that come into our business. Um, and he's kind of the go-to guy for all the tech stuff. So Ollie's going to run us through a little bit about fitting the 11.6 shock to the bike we have in front of us. And then hopefully we can ask uh, and answer any of the questions that you guys might have in advance. So firstly, Ollie, what have we got in front of us? Santa Cruz Mega Tower. Okay. Travel? Uh, 160. Wheel size? 29. Perfect. So it just fits exactly into that sort of race category bike that would suit what we've got in front yeah, of us. Exactly ideal. So with this uh, bike, Ollie, um, obviously this is a specific model and we know that that's the way the push likes to work so that they make a shock specifically for the model to get the most out of it. So if I didn't know much about it and I wanted to know, can a shock from Push Industries fit my bike? What's the best way to go about it? Best way, either go on the Saddleback or Push Industries website. Okay. Um, there'll be a drop down of all the different bikes they do and you, you can choose your model from there and if they got it, they got it. And uh, I take it there's lots of different options, lots of different types of models. Um, what, kind of, what kind of things do they do in the relation to the types of shocks? Um, so there's a few different mounting options. Um, with this would be a kind of a side stack bridge. Sure. Just to suit the, uh, the tunnel and the space that's there. So this um, is all about so it can fit into the frame depending yeah. on the, the, the way that the frame's constructed, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, so do trunnion as well. Um, a few e-bike specific models as well. Okay. So. Any differences to the shock that they would use for e-bikes? Any? Um, so it's the 116R HD. Okay. So heavy duty. It's got a steel shaft. So. Right. So this is just to handle the handle, the, the much sort of uh, more rigorous sort of uh, yeah. uh, weight and everything that's been pushed through these e-bikes. Yeah, increased load. So soon we're going to be actually fitting the shock to the bike and you're going to give us a bit of a run through on how to actually do that. Um, but what can I expect to feel from this shock? So I'm upgrading from an air shock to the Push Industries 11.6. What am I going to feel? Okay, so main thing is going to be increased sensitivity. Okay. So yeah, over the rust stuff, it's going to feel absolutely sublime. Yeah. Um, a lot more support as well through the travel. There's a lot more adjustment, so you can make it really kind of sit up where you want it to and you know, to use all the travel where you need it to as well. Um, yeah, and over longer descents, it's going to be exactly the same all the way through. Fantastic. Like on, on other shocks, you'll find that at the bottom, we be that little bit faster because it's got hot. Yeah. It'll be firmer, so you won't get that at all. So, Ollie, upgrading the shock from air to coil with the 11.6, what am I going to feel as a rider? What are the differences? Okay, so, okay, so main benefit, I would say, increased sensitivity. Yeah. I mean, it's got a huge IFP. Um, so basically reduces the amount of heat that can build up in it. So because that's so big, it means it can move less, therefore creating less heat, less heat. So it's, yeah, it stays more the same. So with, with it creating less heat, Dolly, so you're getting, I suppose, more consistent performance. Let's say you were on a really long enduro track or you're, you're on a big day out, you're just getting consistency from top to bottom, yeah, right? Top to bottom, and if it's exactly the same. Other shocks you might find that close to the bottom, they'll you know, get that little bit firm and that little bit faster because all the oil is heating up. Yeah. You won't get that with this. Okay, exactly fantastic. And, yeah. and Ollie, there's stuff happening with the bearings on this. So give us a bit of a rundown on the bearings and what effect does that have on the actual so shock itself? So we've got spherical bearings, front and rear. Um, this basically makes the shock a separate entity to the front and rear of the bike. So, so this, this has got a sort of lateral movement rather than just that normal rotational movement that we would expect from a yeah. bearing, right? So it's basically when you load it up into a corner rather than both ends of the bike flexing and trying to twist the shock that doesn't happen at all and it's able to go through its travel as it would normally excellent excellent ollie what about this so this this looks like we've got two completely separate compression chambers here what do these do for us what can we expect from these yeah so it's a dual overhead valve system so the silver one is always the 
softer, more DH set one. Okay. So the darker is more the climb, or we can set up for trails as well. You've got an enormous amount of range with them. They're generally preset for DH and climb. Um, so it's sort of like two completely ride feels. So yeah. uh, on one, I've got sort of something that's a little bit firmer for my climbing, and then something that's really open for those fast chundry stuff. Is that? Yeah, it's like two shocks in one. Great. It's like a climb switch that doesn't affect the downhill side. Fantastic. So, um, Ollie, on the shock, there's some other little details that maybe not somebody who's not so technical as me uh, might forget to look at, but are actually important for the overall makeup and performance yeah. of the shock. So, what about this, Ollie? What is the deal with this, uh, with the bottom out stop? So, that's the rod bumper. So, it's cone shaped. So, you know, so this is softer. This would normally be a hard, like a hard plastic in, in some other shocks. So, how come it is soft? Well, it actually is part of the part of the travel on, on the shaft, so it actually gives you bottom out control with that, you know, with the cone shape, so it increases as it goes through and doesn't just, you know, like a flat one, just squish like a pancake. Okay, so this has got actual much. compression properties then. Yeah. Ah, right, and great. There's, two, well, there's a few different density versions of that as well. Yeah. So the black is soft to say an amber one that comes on a different shop. For a different Excellent. Bike. Okay, so we're about to fit this to the bike, Ollie, and uh, you'll take us through the process just to show us how easy it is. Now, to my understanding, the way the push industries work, they work on this 80-20 rule, right? Where normally if you were buying a, a, a bike with an aftermarket shock on, they work on it being 20% preset and 80% sort of open to changing. Yeah. Now, they flipped it on its head for the 11.6, right? So what does that do for you know, a rider as far as understanding the technology? It makes it incredibly easy because the shock, as it is, obviously when you put the spring on, be completely set up, ready to go. You haven't got to mess about and have like so many runners trying to find out exactly where you want it, even though you might not even know where you want it. It's just there, ready to go. So this is a case of choosing the right bike, getting the right shock, giving your weight details, and essentially it gets preset for your liking. Yeah, it's done, ready, bolt on. And some fine adjustments so we can just have a bit of a play if we want. What if I did play? What if I, and that 20%, if I knocked it completely from one side to the other, is that going to have a massive effect on the shock? It will have an effect on the ride feel for sure, but it's still not going to be miles away from where it needs to be. I mean, it's all done in the shim stack, which is the rod bumper. Yeah, it's there. So that 80% really is just to make sure, hey, we've done all this for you, just go and ride it. Yeah. Great. Well, listen, show us how to fit it, Ollie. That's the next part. Yeah, let's get it on. So Ollie, how can I expect to receive my shock before we fit it? How does it come out of the box? Exactly like that. Perfect. So the, we don't need to do anything, right? It just no. needs to be fitted to the bike. Bolt it on. Where uh, you go. And what about fitting it? What tools do I need? How easy is this? Um, completely depends on your bike and what you know shock bolts you've got. Yeah. Um, it's generally just the two it, it, bolts to do that. It's that easy, right? Yeah. So I just need an Allen key or whatever fits the bolts. Before you fit, Ollie, one thing that did stand out when you were talking about what exactly is this little red bushing? That's a polymer bearing. Okay. Right, so it allows you to twist the spring, well, it allows the spring to twist freely. Right. Yeah, so, so this is what, just for like reducing friction to make sure that the spring moves freely? Yeah. When it moves for the travel, it will twist very slightly. If that is completely fixed and doesn't allow it to move, it can bind up. Right. Which can then essentially change the kind of pound rate of the, of the spring. So that really has a big effect on just the free feeling of the yeah. whole. Okay, exactly. awesome. Works awesome. very similar to the spherical bearings in a way. So that working with the spherical bearings and everything else just yeah, yeah keeps Found it feeling it super nice. Separate entity. Excellent. Okay, well let's get fitting. So Ollie, shock fitted. Um, literally, it is a case of removing the other one, putting that one in, and I guess like torque settings and whatever you need to do for the specific frame. Yeah. Anything else we need to worry about now that it's fitted? Well, I'll just make sure that when you torque down the bolts, get the bike on the floor, make sure the eyelets are probably seated around the bolts. And ah, so the final tightening of the bolts needs to be done on the ground. Yeah. Okay, Ollie, so shock fitted. Anything else that we need to do? 
Let's ride it. Ready to Lovely. Go. It looks so good. It absolutely changes the way the bike looks. Absolutely beautiful. And what is amazing, look at this. The spherical bearings, the movement, the, like how little friction there is there. Absolutely cannot wait to ride this thing. Ollie, thank you for your help. Um, and Ollie's here. If you have any questions, um, send them in.